Hi, this is Bruce. Welcome to my Baptronics lab here in the uh, Rocky Mountains. And uh, today we're going to take a look at a Hewlett Packard 204C oscillator. Alright, well this 204C is in decent shape for its age. 1968 vintage. Um, all the sides are removable, the top is removable. The case is cast aluminum, and that also pulls apart. Um, very solid construction, but easy to easy to work on. Um, it's got a couple of four rubber feet. And a uh, stand. Tilt stand. About the only thing, uh, somebody pulled the um, the little HP nameplate off, or it fell off. I don't know which, but uh, um, it does say Hewlett Packard in the corner. It's got 204C oscillator on it, so it's easily identifiable. And the um, serial number on this is 9180259. It's listed right at the bottom, underneath the uh, the terminals here. Um, Looking at the back side, we have a, a switch here in the corner for uh, be normal uh, oscillation, or if we want um, uh, low distortion, then you can put this in the low distortion side. But they tell you to just work more slowly than change your frequency slowly, because it has a tendency to uh, wobble a little in that uh, in that case. The rest of this, the, cho the charge rate and the uh, choice of voltage doesn't work anymore because that all related to the older um, uh, rechargeable batteries. Um, and the cord is a uh, modern cord. Did away with the $35 or $40 cord that you have trouble finding. So uh, we're going to go ahead and set something up. We'll run this thing through its paces and uh, get right back to you. Well, with the side panel removed, we take a look at the outside here. And with the side panel, you just take these four screws out. The blue side panel comes off, which is here. Blue-gray. And you have all of your calibration points uh, for the frequency and the automatic gain control line. Bias, your measuring points are in here, AGC, V plus, V minus, um, the bias measuring point, and uh, adjustments for that, and adjustments for AGC and frequency calibration to the front dial. So we just went through all of that, and um, we're going to go ahead and run a test now to see how we perform. All right, I've uh, disassembled the uh, the case on this um, uh, HP 204C and um, showing you the power supply that's been uh, installed on the um, power supply board. At one time, this was um, this was for rechargeable uh, batteries, and uh, they had gone bad and just damaged the board and was basically unrepairable in my opinion. So uh, put this modern um, plus and minus 12 volt power supply in here. I did a, did a decent job of it. Nice plastic standoffs and plenty of space. Replace the old-fashioned uh, uh, three-prong cord which is very difficult to get and expensive with a uh, standard cord. and. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and uh, we'll test her out. Alright, well we got the HP hooked up to both a oscilloscope and a frequency counter. And we are right now on our lowest range. We are on uh, uh, times 5 
and we've adjusted for 5 Hertz and um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dial up. We're reading 5.00 hertz on the on the fluke, and um, we're getting roughly one trace in 200 uh, milliseconds. So let's go up to five. Okay. Be five times five. Be 25 hertz. And we're getting 50 milliseconds roughly per trace, a little bit over a trace. And uh, that would, I think, uh, work out to be about 20 some hertz. Um, so we should be reading 25. I've dialed in 5 times 5 be 25 hertz. We're getting 23.8. Let's go ahead and dial in. Uh, 50. We're getting 47.87, so we're within 2.2 hertz. And nice single trace in 10 seconds. Uh, and that's 10 times 2 would be uh, 20 milliseconds. And that would be 1 over 20 milliseconds, 50 hertz. Let's go to times 10. We're still on the 10 on the dial here. And we are getting roughly one trace in uh, 10 divisions at 1 millisecond. That's 10 milliseconds. Be roughly uh, 100 hertz. And we are reading 97.0. So we're within 3 hertz of, uh, of 100 and all we did was just adjust the dial. So we're within 3 hertz on the dial. Let's take her down to 5. And we'll go ahead and... We're getting one trace in um, 10 divisions at 2 milliseconds per division, which would put us at about 50 hertz. Uh, and we're reading 47.96 or 48, so we're within 2 hertz of 50. Take her down to uh, 1. And we would want to read uh, 10 hertz because it's times 10. We're reading 9.58 so we're within 0. 0.42 hertz of 10 hertz and we can certainly uh, display a trace there. Okay going to the times 100 range. I'm a 1 on the scale or on the dial and I am getting one trace in 10 divisions um, at 1 millisecond per division so it's 10 milliseconds so we're getting 100 Hertz and we are reading 95.77 so within 0.43 Hertz of 100 Hertz uh, again, just dialing it in. Okay, here's uh, one uh, one full cycle displayed in ten uh, divisions. We are at 0 0.1 milliseconds per division, and uh, ten divisions would make that one millisecond, which would make this one thousand hertz. We're reading on the counter uh, 971 hertz, so 29 hertz out of a thousand were off on the dial. Okay, and we'll take her to the next frequency, go up to five. Right about there. And try and get one trace on here. There. One trace in 10 divisions. Uh, 
20, millis, 20 microseconds per division, so that's 200 microseconds, which would make this uh, 5 kilohertz. We've got 4.95 kilohertz, so we are 500, yeah, about 499 hertz out of 5 kilohertz uh, as far as the dial went. We got that close, which is what, about 1% roughly? Um, go ahead and take her up to 10. About there. And one trace and 10 divisions again. And that's at 10 microseconds per division, so that'd be 100 microseconds, which would make this 10 kilohertz. And we are, in this case, 40 hertz over 10 kilohertz on the dial. All right, let's go ahead and take her up to times 10K. We'll take her back down again, start at 1. Okay, we got one division in uh, 10 microseconds, uh, I mean, one cycle, 10 divisions, 10 microseconds. That'd be a 100, um, 100 microsecond sweep, and that would be 10 kilohertz. We got 9.696 or 9.7, so we were then three, um, 300 hertz of 10 kilohertz just by dialing in. Let's take her up to five. Okay. We got one trace and 10 divisions. Uh, we are 2 microseconds per division, so that'd be 20 microseconds. 1 over 20 microseconds, and we should get about 50 kilohertz. And we are reading right now 49.248, so 49,248 hertz. So we're uh, about 52 hertz under 50,000 uh, on the dial. And if I dial up to... 10 and get one division in one cycle in 10 divisions one microsecond per division that'd be 10 microseconds one over 10 microseconds we should get 100 kilohertz and we are reading 100.248 so we are <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. 248 hertz over 100 kilohertz on the dial. Very small fraction error. Finally, we go to the times 100 uh, K scale. We'll take ourselves back down to 1. All right, we're 1 on the, uh, on the dial. We're getting... Uh, um, one cycle in 10 divisions at one microsecond per division, that'd be 10 microseconds. Uh, one over that, that would be 100 kilohertz. We're reading 97.6 uh, kilohertz. So we are um, four, let's see, it'd be what, 2,400, 2,400 hertz under the uh, 100 kilohertz. Um, one on the dial in times 100. Let's go up to five. Looks good. Uh, we are getting one cycle, 10 divisions, 0.2 microseconds per division. So that'd be a total of two microseconds, one over two microseconds. We should get 500 kilohertz. And uh, we are reading 0.49658 megahertz, so 496,570 or 80. So 
<clears throat> we're roughly uh, 3,500 hertz under 500,000 on the dial. Again, small error, very close. And going up to 10, right about there. And adjusting the dial for one cycle. We are on uh, 0.1 microseconds per division. That'd be one microsecond across. Um, that would put us at one megahertz. We are reading 0.98969, so 989,690 hertz we're generating, according to the frequency counter. And that would put us at about uh, 10,500 10, hertz under a megahertz. Uh, again, small error for a dial. And... We'll take ourselves all the way up to 1.2 just to prove that it can do it. In fact, let's go to the maximum, so whatever it is. And the maximum is 1,295,000 hertz. Okay, and amplitude-wise, let's get ourselves... Here's 10,000 hertz. Ten thousand hertz. Uh, we are reading ten thousand fifty-eight, so we're fifty-eight hertz over. All I did was dial in, and uh, amplitude on this right now is plus or minus two divisions at one volt per division, so that's four volts peak to peak. If I take her up all the way, I'm going to have to actually change my scale. We are now two volts per division, and we're running almost three divisions up, maybe two point eight. 2.8 times um, 2, so 4 volts, uh, this would almost be, uh, it'd be like 1.8 volts more, so 5.8 up, and 5.8 down, that would be, uh, oh, 11.6, something like that, peak to peak. So we have quite a bit of amplitude where it's available to us. We can dial it all the way down. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's a sync output terminal. Uh, you can sync the signal with a this signal with another one. There's a uh, switch in the back that allows you to go into um, uh, low distortion mode in uh, uh, in that mode. Uh, but you have to dial the uh, frequency slowly. It tends to bounce a little bit. Um, but all in all, it's a classic piece. It's very nicely constructed, still in decent shape, and it functions. Functions well. So thanks for watching, and uh, uh, good luck on your bidding. I'm going to include a... Uh, a uh, couple of manuals and the original uh, uh, magazine article where it was introduced in 1968. Give you some information about the unit and uh, uh, what it's good for, uh, what made it special. And then the manuals will go through the operation and calibration of the unit and so on. So, happy bidding. Good luck. Thanks for watching.